the central question in modern physics is you put lots and lots and lots and lots of very simple tiny things together, they conspire with each other, they uh, turn into a whole which is more than a sum, it's the emergence idea. If you start out with a system of particles and they have interactions, uh, you think Roughly speaking, you think you know everything about the system. You basically put some constituents and you are going to get something else that is much more than what was there at the beginning. New physical phenomena, totally different physical worlds emerge out of these building blocks. And you cannot predict them just by looking at the building blocks. It's very naive to think that once we have the rules of the game, then we, we know everything there is to know. The collective behavior of this whole, uh, of this whole system essentially always has surprises. Perhaps these condensed matter physics systems are right now the test bed because we really know there what the very deep and fundamental uh, mathematical problems are. And in order to think clearly about anything really, we need to somehow figure out how to solve these problems. So this is an old idea set up by Feynman. Those are the so-called quantum simulators. You use one system that you can control to try to understand the behavior of another quantum system that you, you cannot control. And going to low temperatures is a way to manipulate these ultra-cold atoms in optical lattices and make them emulate condensed matter systems. It's a model system, if you like, but it's a very clean system. There are no impurities and uh, there are almost no disturbances. You can use lasers not only to bombard particles, but also to generate some kind of egg box made of light. And now you put these very cold particles inside. Once you have it, it's kind of completely isolated and it's like a universe on its own. And this system is a quantum system can be used to simulate other quantum systems that we still want to understand with real materials. We were very inspired by the work that people in Leiden have been doing, Kurnaat Schalm, Jan Zane uh, and a group of students. And that has been very inspiring. I think they were the first in the Netherlands to start working on connections between gravity and condensed matter. I said to myself, I have to find a condensed matter physicist who can explain to me what this is, because this looks really cool. And not even a week later, it was pure coincidence, Jan Zanen gave a seminar, a colloquium actually, at the University of Amsterdam about quantum criticality in high TC superconductors and strange metals. He had a paper in his hand, which is this very paper that I had printed out, and he was running upstairs to the string theorists at that moment. Amsterdam had the largest string theory community. Somebody has to tell me what this ads cft is, because this sounds like a really cool thing. We can do something. A more dramatic example which we have seen is where, where discoveries made in, in high energy physics, string theory, particle physics, are being used in an attempt to explain superconductivity. What we have discovered since the work of Maldacena, it also goes back to work by Gerard at Hoofd here, is that um, um, there can be equivalent descriptions of the same uh, thing. We've learned that we can describe systems of particles and their interactions without gravity. It turns out to be equally well described by a theory that looks seemingly different, but it includes gravity and it includes another dimension. And um, this is called duality. And um, it was subsequently found that this mathematics of duality is very general. It applies to lots of systems. Uh, and in fact, it could be very helpful because many of these dualities are quite non-trivial, so that they relate a world that is very difficult to understand in one domain of physics to a world that is very well understood in that particular domain. And so you can use the duality to map one on the other. Although you think that these things can have nothing to do with each other, one is a theory with gravity, the other one is a theory without gravity. Uh, one is a theory that lives in three dimensions, the other one lives in four dimensions. How can they have anything to do with each other? But curiously and most beautifully and excitingly, this map acts in such a way that precisely when the calculation becomes very, very hard in the regular quantum theory, the calculation becomes very easy on the string theory side. 
ADS-CFT gives us an effective description of a class of materials. Whether that class of materials is qualitatively very similar to the ones we see in nature is not entirely clear right now. But certainly some of the standard physical mechanisms that we see in materials like superconductivity, Bose-Einstein condensation, those things definitely do have counterparts in this ADS-CMT setup. If you then put all the little pieces together and you can get an actual description of, a, of a, what people really see in real life experiments with a string theoretic calculation, I think that would be spectacular. And the key prize winner here would be to uh, come up with an explanation for high TC superconductivity, for example. Well, I think many of us physicists believe that the whole value of physics is, is reality. The string theorists have to also think about real physics and real phenomena. And that's very good. Um, uh, that forces us to come out of the mathematical corner and, and think about real physical systems which is very enlightening in any case. So you want to understand why it is so, and you want to make some kind of predictions that experimentalists can measure and tell you your theory is right. We should never forget that eventually this is what the theory is supposed to do for us. The theory must be confirmed by experiment, uh, and so it is very important indeed. This is the mission of physics that we describe nature uh, and not something else. <laughs> I really want to work on things which have a connection with the reality and, and there's no greater joy than to have calculated something on a piece of paper and then finding that actually nature behaves this way. It's very easy to get lost into beauty when you do mathematical theories and so, but for me it's extremely important to know that what I am doing is really connected to reality.